All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabia. I hope you're all well. So I'll be completely honest with you. I came to the studio today wanting to shoot some content for you guys and was kind of like, I've no idea what to do. I spoke to John, my editor, and we bounced some ideas together. And I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to make some videos. We had a few different ideas which we're going to do later on. But for this video, I was thinking, I'd like to talk to you guys about how I use drive into my amps and how I use compression into my amps and how you can combine the two to get everywhere from like a low to mid gain tone all the way up to high gain and use those in many different applications, whether it's, you know, hard rock, chilled out stuff or like heavy riffing. Uh, because I think both of those types of pedals are really useful in this world, especially if you're running an amp that, you, you know, you might not like the high gain tone. It might be that your amp only does like a crunch or a little bit of gain, like, but you want to get a little bit more mileage out of it. You can do that using a couple of different pedals. I think most people will have a tube screamer. Most people have an overdrive pedal. Most people might have a compressor. Um, so, and if you don't, it's worth getting one because I think they're really useful for loads of different styles of playing. They're not just good for like, you know, funk or country chicken picking and all the rest of it. So I'd like to show you how I go about using them today. For this video, I'm using my Kraken because it's trusty, wonderful sounding British. Uh, the first gain stage is like a very British kind of overdrive or crunch, if you want to call it that. And I've dialed the gain right back. So it's really just dr being driven by my pickups in the guitar, but also it's got a little bit of gain there that we can utilize when we're using a compressor. So that's basically the gist of this video. Just wanted to share a bit of knowledge and some tones with you guys and hopefully you'll find it helpful. As you can see on the pedal board below, I've got a Cali 76 stacked edition, but we're just gonna use one side of it so it is just a standard Cali 76 compressor. I'm running the preamp Mark II from Chase Bliss because I've just got it, it's incredible. And the main reason that I'm using this is because it does more than just like a drive, it can do overdrive, fuzz, distortion, all the rest of it. And I've got a Maxon OD8 um, 808 even, because that's a classic tube screamer and it's a drive pedal at the end of the day, it does overdrive. So I wanted, you know, to combine something that's, you know, like more of an affordable, more common pedal, but then also something that's not necessarily anything to do with the price point of these pedals, but more just they're good at what they do and they're, they're versatile. So it allows me to express my point a little bit easier. For the guitar, I've just got my uh, Music Man Sabre with my bare knuckles in it. And as I said, the gain is dialed right back on the amplifier, so. So obviously that sounds quite crunchy. Um, that's because these are high output pickups. If I was to grab a single coil guitar for a second, you'll be able to hear that it really isn't that driven. So it's really not that driven, it's just using humbuckers obviously drives the front of an amp harder. I think that's an important point to make is, you know, your pickups, depending on the style of guitar you use, whether it's a Les Paul with medium output pickups or it's a modern guitar with high output pickups, um, it will definitely colour the sound of your amplifier. Uh, it's, it, it's very influential over, over the sound of your amp and how it responds. So in this case, I'm going to be using modern high output sound. <laughs> but it's still definitely a crunch, you know. So it's really not doing a lot. So the first thing I wanna talk about is compression, how we can use a compressor to get more out of the amplifier and with nothing else, just using compression, how we can influence the sound of the amplifier and get more gain. Firstly, gain is type of compression, clipping, whatever you wanna call it. So what we're doing is we're compressing compression, if you know what I mean, therefore, in the classic sense of compression, like a snare drum, for example, when you hit a snare drum with no compression, you get that transient really quick, and then you don't really hear the tail, you don't hear the character, because the first initial transient is so intense. So when you compress it a bunch, what you end up hearing is uh, more of the character and bigger tail of the snare. So that's how you wanna think about it, like ghost notes on a snare and then heavy hits on a snare. When you compress it, you hear more of the ghost notes and less of the initial transient, so it pulls everything together. So that's classic sort of term of compression. Now, if you're thinking compression for guitar, you're thinking funk, 
uh, you know, that kind of Corey Wong style, funky, chanky stuff like um, Nile Rogers, that kind of thing, uh, or country chicken picking kind of stuff as well. But I think there's a way of balancing that compression effect and then using a compressor pedal to actually drive your amp a little bit harder. It, one, in sending signal to the front of the amp, and two, in uh, compressing it just enough so that it's getting a little bit more harmonic content, it's pulling it together a little bit more so you can hear. So I've got the Cali 76 on the board. I've dialed the um, sort of through knob all the way to one side, so it's just gonna give me one side of compression like a standing compressor. And what you will also find with compressor pedals in general is they'll have a level, they'll have the sustain or compression, if you wanna call it that. And then some more advanced pedals will have things like uh, attack and release and stuff. But really we wanna focus on the effect of compression and that level control. The higher you boost the level, the more signal it's sending to the front of the amp, therefore it's gonna drive it harder. So, I'm just gonna back off the compression and the attack and the release knob is in the middle so it's not really doing anything. So at the minute we're just getting dry signal. I've got the dry signal on full so what I've done with the compressor is I've dialed in, there's no in and out, the dry signal's going all the way in and the actual effect of the compressor with regards to attack and release isn't really doing anything. So first things first, let's see what happens when we drive up the compression sound. For that, I'm gonna dial all the way out with the dry signal, so we've got nothing. Now bring it in. So I've kept output fairly low because obviously that's gonna drive the front of the amp harder and actually I'm choking it a bit because I've got less output from the pedal than the amp itself, if you listen. So now you can hear the compression effect. And it's actually cleaned up the amp somewhat. That's not really what I'm gonna try and show you in this video. Because I've just taken the dry signal all the way out, you're just hearing the compressed signal. So I wanna get that to drive the amp harder. So I've boosted the output and I'm compressing it even more now. And I'm gonna actually, gonna give it a, a slower attack and a faster release. Slower attack means the onset of compression is gonna happen later, so it's allowing the amp to breathe a bit more. If we compare that to off, So you can hear now, there's no dry signal in there, so that's just the compression, and that's obviously gonna be, it's gonna be dynamically different when you play. It's gonna have sustain. Which is really nice. Again, we can use this for lead to our advantage, and also for playing legato and anything fast, it's gonna pick out those nuances way more. I'd actually need to play very hard. So now, if I bring the dry signal in to blend in with this, you should notice that you get all that original response from your amp, but then you also get that added sustain and I guess less dynamic, but it allows you to play easier. It's more fluid. So I'm gonna dial the dry back in. So this is before. And now with the compressor. Now if I take the compressor off. It's 
It's kind of uninspiring now. Now, it's worth saying that you can obviously adjust this to taste, but what it really is allowing me to do here is have the sustain, so I can play a lower gain kind of lead thing, but also it's giving me more drive out of the amplifier because I'm hitting the front end harder. And I can increase that by turning the output of the pedal up. In other words, on a standard compressor, it would just be level. So three quarters output. So you're getting a super thick crunch out of the amp, all based off this sound. Gonna throw on some reverb and delay. Okay, but you get the idea. It's so much more usable as a hard rock tone if you've got an amp that doesn't give you like high gain or lots of gain. You can use a compressor to, to get that from it. Now, if I use an overdrive like this OD808 on the floor. Again, we can hit the front end harder by turning the volume up and lowering the drive. Listen to what happens if we put it in classic Tube Screamer territory. So lots of level, tone somewhere just above halfway and a tiny bit of drive. Let's see what happens. <laughs> because it's worth saying, it's worth saying that we're compressing the compressor is first in the chain, then we've got our drive pedals. I think it's really important to compress the guitar first and then layer of effects over the top because otherwise you're gonna compress the effect of overdrive and it's gonna sound really squishy and weird. But it's very different to putting a compressor first in the chain. Anyway. Again, it's a really smooth, nice, mid-rich kind of lead tone. It's not high gain, but it's certainly got enough gain and sustain that you could really enjoy playing some lead on that. And also, we normally associate lower gain and like shred, for example, being harder because you need that gain, that compression to allow you to fly around the neck and it pick up all the nuances. But the unique thing about using a compressor is that it allows you to do that anyway because it's compressing everything so much. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
I mean, one thing I'm experiencing again is that when you have a lot of gain, it can also sound messy, but the opposite's happening. Well, not the opposite. The same thing is happening, but in the opposite sound here, in that we're compressing everything. It's picking out all the nuances and all the fluff and scratchiness that happens when you try and shred that you're not very good at it. Uh, and uh, you can hear that too. So there's a balance, but that was the point I wanted to make when it came to compression, is how you can use it to drive your amp a little bit harder and get a little bit more out of your amplifier and also it allows you to play things a little bit easier in terms of like lead and legatos and it gives you more sustain. So I think that's a really useful tip that I personally use a lot in, in my tones and my playing. Excuse the background noise, it's getting really warm in here so I uh, figured I'd turn the fans on. So next, let's just take the compressor out of the equation and let's listen to the Tube Screamer. Tube Screamers traditionally drive the front of your amp harder, they give you more uh, mids, of course, and uh, tighten things up a little bit. When you're using a low gain tone, you can clearly hear a little bit more what's going on uh, with regards to the effect it has, but it doesn't necessarily make things easier to play. That's using it in its sort of classic sense, you know, boosting the volume of it so it's hitting the front of the amp harder, but the drive is low. If we turn the drive up, doesn't necessarily give us higher gain. It's almost like, again, a type of compression in a way, so. I mean, it sounds thick, but it's not necessarily got all the girth that when you compress the signal and it brings all of that together, you know? So, I like to use them both together. I like to use uh, a compressor to beef up the signal not necessarily loads of compression, but just to beef it up a bit more. And then I like to use an overdrive or a drive pedal of some description, whether it's a Maxon like Tube Screamer or something like this preamp Mark II or the Thunderclaw or whatever, to just give it a little bit more edge, give it a little bit more fatness, not necessarily for the purpose of boosting all the gain all the way up, but just to color the sound a bit more. But what I wanted to show you with the preamp Mark II was using it in, in the world of fuzz, because this brings me on to my next point. I like to use compressors to, you know, drive and control the amp in the way that I want if I use it low gain. I like to use something like an overdrive to just heighten everything, give it more color. And then we're gonna use the preamp Mark II in a fuzz setting, because I wanna show you how I also like to manipulate fuzzes um, for more modern sort of tones. So that's the kind of first tone I've quickly dialed in. Next thing I'm gonna do is use the Tube Screamer on top of that. It will intensify, but it also it'll kind of give me a little bit more clarity.
So I prefer that because it gives me that sort of speaker breaking tone and it's less controlled, but for me, the added mids of a tube screamer give it more of a bold sound, especially in a mix with a band. It's kind of hard to explain, but this is the process that I've been over many times in, it, since playing in Tosca and stuff, like trying to utilize um, fuzzes and overdrives in front of gain stages on amplifiers to create just colossal sounds. Then when you add the reverb and delay on top, when you add it all together, That's very reminiscent of the tone that I used at the end of a Lumo, which admittedly I've not played in a long time, but it's like this. Uh... So that, for me, is the kind of fuzz, overdrive, ambient thing that I would like to do. Okay, so I'm hoping that was a relatively brief uh, overview of how I use compression and uh, overdrive into an amp like this, or a sort of low gain crunch channel with humbuckers. Now I wanna do the same thing real quick with single coils, because single coils obviously don't drive the amp anywhere near as hard as you can hear. So let's assume that that's the kind of tone we're working with. Going back to the compressor, um, I, th I find that compressors really help thicken up a strat tone or a single coil tone. Um, and I am very much a fan of what it does to the, the tone overall. So let's leave this, the controls where they were for the uh, humbuckers and check out what it does. Might back off the compression a touch. Just made it a little bit less clanky, if that's a good word to use. Now if I throw on the max on in the classic uh, controls, I might boost the gain and back off the tone. So as you can hear, you're getting tons of gain out of the amplifier without having to change anything on it. So that's why I like compressors because they really do a lot for me in dialing in tones and thickening things out and getting more you know, out of the channel that I'm on. A lot of the times nowadays, I just run the single channel. I don't really change a lot on the amp. And the cool thing is having it first in the chain is it means it compresses the signal and then it sends it elsewhere. So that's why you can layer other stuff on top of it. So if I go back to, if I go back to the preamp mark two, find a relatively thick tone. Kind of thick, throw the compressor on.
that's a really good example of what the compressor does, because without it... It adds tons more beef to the sound. I think that's great. But if you've got any drive pedal that you really like the tone of and it's, it thickens things up a bit, try, just try putting a compressor before, as in first in your chain, with a low crunch, see what happens, see how much you can get um, out of that combination just by throwing a compressor in the mix. I think that's a really cool way of using compressors that I don't really see a lot and I think it works. I like it. That's what happens when you turn everything on. Hopefully there was some use in this video. Hopefully John's edited into a concise kind of format where it kind of makes sense. Cause as I said, I came into this video being like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I just want to shoot something for you guys. And I figured the way I like to use compressors might be something worth talking about. So that's why I did it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. I'll link these bits of gear in the description box. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all the rest of it, please find me under Rubir Afro. Uh, and I've got music, so go in the description box, check out my music, links, new music coming soon, and also merch. Go to sleeplessapparel.co.uk if you want merch or tab books. Uh, but yes, thank you for watching. I've been Rubir, and I'll see you all very soon.